Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. So in today's episode, I wanted to show you guys how you might be able to hack Roblox. It's something that I was trying to do for years, could never figure it out. However, recently, I figured out the best way to do it, it uh, involves DLL and injectors. See, uh, Roblox Game Client has a certain way of detecting whether you have cheats enabled or not. So you have to be very uh, careful and meticulous about how you get things done on here. So the first step I wanted to show you guys uh, before diving in is you need to get a VPN. That is one step that is absolutely required if you want to prevent your game client from being detected or detecting your cheats and kicking you from the game. Uh, this goes across many other gaming uh, platforms out there. Any Steam games, this also helps out a lot if you're looking to hack there and prevent yourself from getting banned in the process. So Hotspot Shield is something that I used in high school. Uh, it's completely free and you can get it in the Microsoft Store if you're running your computer on Microsoft or I, oh, sorry, uh, Windows operating system. So if you download Hotspot Shield, like I said, it's free. You don't have to make an account or anything. You just jump right in and you start. I have it enabled right now. Let me just show you what it looks like right quick. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, I have it enabled right now. It's been running for about 43 minutes, but it disguises your IP address, which really does help out a lot. It also tells you what your internet speed is. Um, and it gets encrypted, so your internet may run a little slow if you have one enabled. But uh, it's technically uh, or ultimately worth it in the end, in my opinion. Another important step for making this work properly is having Roblox downloaded on your Microsoft Store. Um, I don't know why it does it or why it's uh, easier to exploit on here if you do it from the Roblox Store or Roblox from the Microsoft Store. But uh, that's just a step that helps out a lot. Um, you get you tend to get kicked from games less if you have it downloaded on the store. So if you have a Windows OS, you might want to go ahead and do that right quick and it'll make things a lot easier for you in the long run. Um, but I really have no founding evidence to prove that it actually helps you. Okay, so though it may look a little sketchy in my opinion, I'm pretty sure it might look a little sketchy to y'all as well. Um, what I mainly use is Fluxus. If you don't know how to code your own DLLs, then this actually helps out a lot because it's a community-based uh, software. Uh, where people across Roblox who actually, you know. Alright, so this is your little machine right here. Flux is what I typically use to commit exploits on Roblox. Um, so it may look a little sketchy, which it is, it's, it, it kind of is. Um, but it hasn't given me any issues so far, and I've, I've actually enjoyed using it. The only thing that kind of annoys me about it is the key system. You can actually bypass the key with what I'm about to show you, but you have to do it on a day-to-day -day basis, and it gets old after a while, so if you don't want to get a virus on your computer, then, you, then just go ahead and stop the video. Um, it hasn't given me a virus so far. I think it's pretty safe, though it does contain pop-ups. So whenever you first click on the page, it will take you to another tab. Um, I already have it disabled on here. It's not going to do it. But for most people who are doing it for the first time, you may run into that issue where you click on the website and it takes you to another app or tab, sorry. Uh, but first thing you want to do is just click out of that tab, close out of it, and then come back to Fluxus. I already have it downloaded on my computer, so you download it. And once you get it, and once you have it downloaded, it should appear in your downloads as Fluxus 1, or just Fluxus. It's a, it's a, it comes in a WinRAR zip archive, or just a zip archive. I use WinRAR to uh, decompress my, or extract from compressed files, or folders. So another thing you should know about Fluxus is because of the type of program that it is or that the WinRAR contains, it will be flagged as a virus by your computer. However, if you just uh, let it happen or disable your antivirus just for the download or just take whatever actions you need to make sure that it gets down, uh, safely downloaded onto your computer, uh, it won't give you a virus, it's just flagged that way. Okay, so once you have Fluxus extracted from the archive, um, you should have a, something that kind of looks like this, depending on what you make your path as, or what you set the path to. Uh, for me, I have it on this PC, desktop, Flexus. Um, I actually made a second copy by mistake, so there it is. So you'll see something like this, Fluxus version 7. So you'll click on the application, and once you get through the process of installing it, then you should have a folder that's called Fluxus, and you have to set the path into the same folder as you have your Fluxus key bypass remain. I'm going to show you how to do the rest of that in just one moment. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so once you have extracted Fluxus from your archive and decompressed it into your own pathway on the computer, 
For me, I have it set to this PC, desktop, and a folder on my desktop called Fluxus. And I have it open right now. You should see two things, not this in the middle, just the two things. One of them that says Fluxus and the other that says Fluxus version 7. It is an application and you may need to give it administrator permission to run it. So once you have it run, or once you have it running, you can set what pathway to have it installed to, the main files itself, the core of the program, all the, all the data that allow it to run properly. So once you get that settled and once you have it installed, you should see this folder on the top, this folder on the top called Fluxus, uh, whatever you have it named as. And so once you open Fluxus, uh, just give me one moment, I'm going to show you guys. Yeah, once you have it open, you should have another folder by that name and you'll have all these different programs and you should be able to just run Fluxus version 7, the application on its own. You should notice that the size of it is a little bit smaller. Uh, let me kind of show you there, yeah. The size of it is a little bit smaller, noticeably smaller than the actual install installation program itself. So that's how you know it's different. Um, so once you have that settled, you will open it, and it should take you, I can't show you guys for some reason, but it will take you to the key system. It should look something like this. Okay, so once you have the key system running, it should look something like this. Um, I couldn't actually show you guys in the regular program itself, but let me record it for some reason, so I took a screenshot of it and I have it open in Paint right now. So it looks exactly ident uh, identical to this. You should have this link here that says Get Key. So that's the, that's the thing. You could either go through the process of purchasing a key or doing a survey for a key. There's just a whole lot of different things you can do. But because I don't like doing that and it substantially increases the risk of getting a virus on my computer, instead of what I do is I run this key bypass remain. It was developed by someone on GitHub. I will give credit to the creator in one, just one moment. But uh, I would like to show you guys that first. So there is this excellent archive of files that I found on GitHub made by this creator, MemesNut999, great name by the way. Um, so it has a couple different files here that you'll need to install all at once and have the directory the same exact one as where you're keeping or storing your Fluxus files. So uh, right here there's README and the, basically the README is saying like how you can do it. Uh, here's the directions down here. One thing that you need that you absolutely need to get this to work, the key bypasser, is Node JavaScript. Alright so what Node is basically, uh, for people who aren't beginners in JavaScript, Node.js is an open source and crop platform JavaScript runtime environment. It is absolutely necessary to get all the components to kind of link together so the program can run properly. So for people who have never used GitHub before, it contains so many repositories for any sort of program that you know and love. So um, right here, people who haven't used it before, you go to the code, little drop down arrow, and then you download the zip file. And once you have the zip file downloaded, you need to decompress it. And what you'll get is, there's two different versions. There's two ver different versions of what you can get. There is a, uh, well actually, the main one that I use is just called simply Fluxus Key Bypass Remain. It is, uh, again, a, rip, a WinRAR zip archive because I have WinRAR installed. You don't need WinRAR exactly, but it makes decompressing files a whole lot more simple and saves you a lot of time and energy. Okay, so once you have cloned the repository and have extracted it from the archive, what you have next is a couple of different programs here that look rather interesting. Um, you should have node modules already installed. I um, can't remember if that's something that it comes with or that's something that you get whenever you in, uh, install no, the node JavaScript file. So uh, first you have these two bash files. Uh, one of them is called install and one of them is called start. They both run commands. So the first one you want to click is install. A command prompt should pop up called npm install. And you have, may have to run it a couple times to get this thing to work. Uh, that's what I've had to learn from experience. So once it's done installing, it should have a little loading bar that fills up. And once it's done installing, what you need to do next is run start. Okay. So once you have that open, another thing you need to do is go back to Fluxus. So before you do anything else, what you need to do is actually get to the key. Uh, you do that by clicking get key, of course, and then it opens up this little window right here Fluxus start, and it gives you this really long address, this URL. So what you want to do is you want to first double click these numbers, and you click and you press Control C to copy it, or you just you know click copy, and then you go back to the program, the Fluxus key bypass, and you paste it. You paste your WHID, which is these numbers right here. This is the WHID right here. 
Okay, so another thing that may be a little concerning to most people who are doing this for the first time is that when you click anywhere on the page, it takes you to another tab. You want to immediately click out of the other tab and go back. And you have to complete the capture to continue. That's something that is you know, more and more common nowadays with all these, this artificial intelligence and these scammers and people who are unleashing artificial intelligence onto different systems. They have to have CAPTCHA in place to keep your, their uh, uh, system safe. So once you verify the CAPTCHA, then it should take you to the next page. All right. Now, for some reason to get the key bypasser to work, you have to get to this website. Click on the boy. Okay, I'm going to do that. And it'll take you to this. Just ignore, don't do anything from this point on, except go back to the key bypass, or not to the key bypass, go back to Fluxus and you click get key again. And it'll open up another tab that shows the URL that we originally had. So like I said before, uh, the key bypass system or the start program is actually a batch file. So it's going to open up in command prompt and look something like this. All right. So now that we have that selected and we have the thing pasted in, all you need to do next is just press enter. You let it start to bypass. Okay. Bypass final checkpoint and getting key. And now you have your key right here. Bam. You just copy and paste that, go back to Fluxus and input the key. Like I said, uh, this is open right now in Windows Paint, so you're not going to be able to see the key entered, but I have the key inserted, so just trust me here, guys. You click Enter Key. So um, for whatever reason, even though I have Fluxus currently open, it's still not letting me record it. Uh, I don't know why that's happening, but I'm still going to show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so the main Fluxus window is open now. And it should look something like this. You have all these different options here. You can ex execute scripts if you want. It has an executor. It works great. So if you're familiar with Luol, then you will have a great time here. It'll be rather simple. Okay, and then you go to the little button on the left, the second one. The one that looks like a gaming controller. And here you have all of these different scripts that people have uploaded to scriptblocks.com. Uh, so yeah, you have all these programs. I'm going to show you them in just one moment. But uh, there, you're able to hack games now. You have Fluxus, and if you ever need to get a new key, you just have to repeat that process over again. The whole process with going to the website, copying that w or HWID, pasting it back in the command, command prompt while having both Fluxus and the Windows open. So once you have all that open at the same time, you should be able to execute the batch file again, and without any issues, it should give you the key. So if you do not have the window open, if you don't have the tab open showing the WHID or HWID, sorry, I keep getting that mixed up, then you're going to have to execute the program literally hundreds of times. So to save yourself hours of time trying to get this to work, just have the windows open, just have the tabs open. That's what the repository or the author of the repository does not tell you, which makes things a lot easier in the long run. Okay, so the, this is a very active community on Fluxus, and uh, so you have a lot of scripts getting uploaded daily. All you need to do is just type in a name of the game you want to hack, and then just select a script from there. Most of the time they work, but sometimes they will not. They'll just do nothing. And sometimes they'll just crash your game, so let me do this over again. And whenever you have Roblox open from the Microsoft Store, you need to click Inject. Whenever you have a game running, or like you're in a game, just click Inject, or Experience, yeah. Click Inject, and you'll suddenly, Fluxus will have access to the game itself, the game client. And some of these programs, at least most of them, are not going to be, are only going to be client side, only ser uh, not server side. So because they're only client side, they'll only affect you. Uh, people won't be able to see what you're doing, but you'll be able to see what you're doing. That includes if you have B tools, if you have F3X or B tools, then they're not going to be able to see what you're doing unless they're FE somehow. Um, if you type in the, the keyword FE, a lot of the times you'll get programs or scripts that are not client side they're server side and like FE kill all. That, that is one that I particularly enjoy. There's this one called FE kill all that will sometimes, depending on the whether the game runs off R6 or R15, you'll be able to fling people just constantly. Over and over again you'll fling people and they'll be freaking out. The script doesn't loop for that long. It only lasts about a minute. So uh, once you have FE kill all running then you're going to have a great time. You're going to see some of the results. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the results. Okay, so once you have the FE uh, command popped up, you may have to type in just FE kill. I'm just going to do a quick example here before I end the video. So I have Prison Life running on Roblox right now, again, from the Microsoft Store. It's very important that you have that 
that you have that running so the game client doesn't detect that you're using cheats and kicks you off. So it's the fourth option from the right, the one that kind of looks like this, uh, the one with the box that sees Universal next to. I'm going to go ahead and join Prisoners, and then I'm going to execute FE Kill All and watch what it does. Let the magic happen. And you're going to notice very quickly that people start freaking out. They're going to start noticing, yeah. <laughs> so right now I'm flinging everyone in the server. The script only runs for about a minute, so you need to make sure you just do it over and over again. People can kill you while you're doing this. Basically how it works is just flings your body all over the place in rapid succession. And uh, at this point, I guess I'm technically helping the criminals, I'm, or not criminals, the inmates. I'm helping them escape prison and turning them into criminals. So at the same time, I am you know, technically ruining the people's experience, but I'm at least helping people get to where they need to go. And sometimes if, if people are flying or they're sitting, then this won't work on them. And now you notice quickly that there are no inmates left. Not even me, even though I keep respawning. So when you execute the FE kill command, um, what, what it will do is that it takes you from your current position, it saves it, it backs up your current position, your coordinates, and it flings your body around different players, it sets your, C, your upper torso C frame to be in the exact same location as any given player, it just chooses a random player, and you're suddenly flinging the shit out of them. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna stop doing this now. Guys, I hope this tutorial helped you out, and if it did, make sure to hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out, it really helps motivate me to create more content for you all in the long run. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching.